When everybody starts learning CAD, they kind of learn it in the let's go click the command, talk about the options and the features and the command, and then work through the process of getting that command to finish. But as you get more comfortable with the design process, especially in SOLIDWORKS where everything so is consistent, you know, most features start with a sketch. After that, you launch into your feature. So you can automate the workflow, and it's a workflow particular to you. Not necessarily, there's not a one-size-fits-all that fits everybody. It's unique to what you're doing in the software because it's such a diverse software. So what I've got going on here is this is just an empty part, completely uh, just file new effectively. As I said first, uh, users, when they're first learning the software, learn in a let's go find the sketch, put it on a plane or whatever we're going to draw on, and then come up and pick your shape and work through the process in this workflow. But each time you do that, you have to drive the mouse effectively from the center of your screen where you're typically working up to your toolbars, pick the right option, pick the right toolbar, and then find the right command on the toolbar. And that all adds up to a not inconsiderable amount of time with each repetitious, each repetitious feature. So what you can do is use mouse gestures and keyboard shortcuts to automate your workflow and work a lot faster without having to drive up here. And as I said earlier, it's kind of a, there's no one size fits all for this. It's unique to what you're doing in the software, customized to the operations that you do in the software. So I'm going to show you a bit about what I do, what I map, and how that's done. So under the customize option from the command manager, we're going to go to keyboard. And on the keyboard menu here, we have all the different keyboard shortcuts that can be mapped. And it's quite literally every feature and function in SOLIDWORKS, every level, every depth. You name it, you can map to it. So this is a very broad area, and that's why you have to be specific with what you're going to use the software for. I'm going to filter this down with the ones that I've set to, and it doesn't mean a lot of, uh, make a lot of sense to look through this list and talk about them in depth because they're just sorted alphabetically and kind of scattered all over the place. But mouse gestures is a similar concept. Mouse gestures work by hovering the mouse for a second and you get four contextual options or you can enable us to have more options, up to 12, in each of these different environments. And that's the key to using mouse gestures is you get four or more options per environment. So if I'm in the part, I get these options. If I'm in a sketch, I get these options, et cetera, et cetera. So customize these for shortcuts as well because these ones you don't even have to have a finger on the keyboard to execute. So the way I set it up is these are the ones I use all the time. So when I'm in a sketch, lines, circles, squares, all those common shapes that you draw most of the time are what I'm mapped to, as well as a quick dimension, because that's something you always do. So it's mapped to what you're going to most commonly do in that section. And then my keyboard shortcuts fill in the rest of the gap. And this certainly isn't an all-inclusive list. List. I don't have every single command that I use mapped to a keyboard shortcut. That's not the way I use it because there's a lot of commands that I rarely execute. And in that case, I'm fine with having to go find it on the menu. But what it does is lets me save a lot of screen real estate because once I'm comfortable using these keyboard shortcuts, I can set the system to use small icons and get rid of a lot of the text and other things that are up here. And when you... You know, working on a laptop or your mobile, that becomes really important. Every inch of real estate you can get on the screen is valuable. All right, so we showed a little bit about how we're going to create that initial, you know, we drive over, we pick the command. Now let's talk about how we would do it using keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to close that sketch. We're back to an empty part here. So most features in SOLIDWORKS begin with a sketch command. So I'm going to hit S for sketch. That's going to immediately take me into my plane orientation. Where do I want to sketch? If I had a features drawn already, I could pick those features and draw on them. But I'm just going to drop on the top plane here. Now, the next thing I can do is I can pick my shape. What am I going to draw? In the world of machine design, it's almost always a square block with a few holes in it. So I would either come up here or I could use a mouse gesture. So all I did is hover the mouse long enough. I'm still holding the right mouse button and I gain access to any of these commands that I want to execute without having to go over here or type anything. And again, the ones on the mouse gesture are the ones that I use most commonly. So the first things I'm going to do once I'm in my sketch. If I want to change my type, I can do that, but you're only allowed to map one style of a command. So right now I have this type of rectangle selected, 
even though more often than not, I'm going to draw with this one. So that's where I would use a keyboard shortcut to differentiate. This one is just a corner rectangle. And then if I want to use my keyboard, I can use a center point rectangle. Doesn't really matter for our example here, but we're just going to draw this out real quick. I'm going to go right into dimension, start entering my dimensions to define this block. Now that I'm done with my sketch, I'm fully defined. I want to do my extrude. I can either go up here, realize I'm on the sketch toolbar and go to features and do whatever I want, or I can on my keyboard hit E for extrude. I immediately launch into the extrude command and I can define this however I want. Hit the green check when I'm done, or I could have right clicked and finished the feature that way if I didn't want to drive over. But either way, in a few clicks and a few keyboard commands, I'm able to create this block without effectively having to click anything or find anything on the toolbar. You can start to use these keyboard shortcuts to do very quick processes from there. So in a matter of a few seconds, I can be drawing and defining geometry in space on my model. And one of the unique things that keyboard shortcuts lets you do is use the inverse of a command as well. So what I mean by that is I use E for extrude. I'm going to use Shift E for extrude cut. And that's common amongst things like revolves. Revolve for me is the R key. Cut revolve is Shift R. So in that context, I can map four can four commands to what is effectively two keyboard buttons. And that allows me to execute them very fast. So now I'm going to go to Shift E, go right into Cut Extrude, define my extrude. I want it to be all the way through in this context. Obviously, this isn't necessarily great CAD. I didn't leave those... Uh, I didn't fully define that last sketch or use the whole wizard to drill these holes. Just doing this in a real quick context here. Once you're done with your part, you're probably going to add some fillets or chamfers. Those things I map to custom shortcuts as well. So F for fillet, Shift F for chamfer. Now, luckily, you can also switch between these in the, in the menu now. But from there, you can quickly apply your corner treatments, anything that you want to finish the part. And finish your part with very little movement of the mouse and very quick execution of what you want to do. So this is not something that most users are going to learn right away. Um, the way we teach it or the way I teach it to any of my students is we're going to first cover the command and we're going to cover it in perpetuity. What are all the options that exist to me in a sketch? And then when I'm done with this sketch, what are the different features that exist for me within my different features I'm trying to run? Those we all explain, we talk through, we drive through, we talk about all the different options. And in that context, we're always coming over here to click that option. Um, there are a few of them that are default. Um, so a few of the mouse gestures come predefined with the ones you would most likely expect to use. But here in the feature, or in the, in the part environment, I'm sorry, that's not necessarily true. It's more relative of the sketch. You know, everyone sketches with lines, circles, and squares generally. And that's the ones that SOLIDWORKS has predefined for you. Almost every other one I've customized for my specific use. And that's the key to it is customize it for you. Because what SOLIDWORKS has customized for you is just a first approach to it. Here's some to start get started, but they're almost never going to be the ones you want to use long term. But once you know what you're doing, once you're trying to draw quick, Keyboard shortcuts and mouse gestures are going to save you a couple seconds per feature, which stacks up to hours over this course of a week. So a lot of time saved. You're able to move a lot faster through the software.